Hey, welcome to the Layers YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at a state-of-the-art AM race car part which has been made here in the National Centre for Additive Manufacturing in its metal powder bed facility. The part itself not only connects the suspension links, the brake mounts, the wheel, it's also housing for a gearbox of an electric motor. The car itself is an all-wheel drive uh, electric four motor beast which has been developed by Oxford Brooks Racing and be used in the Formula student competition. In this video we're going to be looking at how the parts are actually made using an electron beam melting machine and in future videos we're going to be looking at things such as how the part was designed, how it was processed and some of the other vital steps which go into making a part using additive manufacturing. So without further ado, let's get into it. So today we're going to be joined by Steph and he's going to be setting up the EBM machine today. And this machine is an RCAM Q20 Plus. Now, this would be a good time to introduce what EBM is. So EBM stands for Electron Beam Melting and is a powder-based AM technology in which the powder, in this case a metal, is melted through using an electron beam. And how does it impart this heat? So the electrons in the beam are imparting kinetic energy to the powder particles, which is in turn generating heat that fuses those particles together. The metal powder itself is fed into the system using two gravity fed hoppers on either side of the build chamber. In this case, it's distributing Ti64 powder, which has a particle size or PSD of 45 to 105 microns. The powder is then distributed using a raking system and generally it takes three times to uh, traverse the bed whilst receiving feedback on each pass with multiple powder sensors that can adjust how much powder is taken. Once the right amount of powder uh, has been achieved the bed can start to be heated. In contrast to uh, say a laser powder based fusion process the bed is actually preheated using the electron beam at a defocus setting. This preheats the start plate to around 700 degrees and the build will be kept up at temperature for the remainder of the build duration. Typically in an LPBF process they will melt anywhere from room temperature up to a few hundred degrees which generally leaves the parts with some residual stress however in an EBM part there are very few if any residual stress due to it being built up at temperature and this means later on in the process chain you don't have to stress relieve the parts or you don't have to stick the parts to the base plate with supports or fear cracking uh, it's 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 not foolproof in there there is pros and cons to the system and we'll get on to that in a, a later uh, video so after the preheating has started uh, the build will cycle through typical actions for each layer such as preheating, melting, melting of the supports, raking and then lowering the table. In this case it will lower by 90 microns and it will repeat this process for each layer until the build is complete. In a, an additional contrast to LPBF, the beam is controlled by electromagnets compared to mirrors. This allows the beam to have a much faster translational speed going from tens of meters per second compared to almost 8,000 meters per, per second, allowing the build to maintain multiple melt pools at once. So here's a great shot inside the machine and now we're just going to look up into the port where the beam actually comes down you can see at the back there there's some shutters where the camera actually uh, takes the pictures from and up there you'll see that that's the column where the electron beam is generated from and it's and it's controlled by electromagnets and that's how it achieves its insane 8,000 meters per second uh, speed on our translational speed when moving the beam. 
now Steph's going to be uh, putting the powder into the machine. And in this build, I believe it was fully topped up to 200 kilos of powder. You won't necessarily need that amount of powder, just because I believe this build's only going to take it up to about uh, 270ml. Uh, its max build size is 350mm uh, diameter by 380mm uh, in the Z stroke. Here he's just sticking in uh, the base plate. Uh, he's gone for a circular base plate and that's just down to the size of the build. And what you can see there and is the rake. And so the rake traverses between the two powder hoppers, spreading powder from each of those hoppers. Uh, and he's just checking if the plate is level or not. And if it's not, he can adjust that to just uh, make sure it's where he wants it. The rake itself does travel pretty fast and is a noticeable improvement on previous uh, generations of the machines. Here he is doing what they call a pencil line test and he just wants to check uh, how much the, the, the hoppers are dosing and are they dosing correctly and he can adjust uh, where that rake pulls powder from so that each, uh, I believe it's uh, 90 micron layer height uh, layer is dosing the correct amount of powder. So once he's got those settings dialed in, cleans the powder off the plate just so when it's doing its preheating or start plate heating uh, that powder doesn't immediately uh, disperse due to the charge of the electron beam coming down on it. It's one thing to note in this process that cleanliness is king and, and the use of alcohol and making sure there isn't metallization in the machine is key to getting good builds. So from here he's now going to stick in the heat shield and that just helps retain heat. It'll also uh, stop any excess metallization sticking to the machine. It'll generally stick on these disposable heat shield plates and it also contain any backscatter of radiation. So now Steph's going to be looking at the actual electron beam gun itself. He's going to take apart the grid cup, which is where the cathode sits. Now this is where uh, a current is run across the single crystalline cathode and that's where you generate the electron beam from. And so what he's going to take it out and he's then going to look at it uh, via this little microscope just to understand are there any blemishes on the surface, take a record of that and then he'll stick it back in the machine if he's happy with it. If he's not, you'll replace it. As you see there, the machine is fairly well built and that's because the machine will go under vacuum and it, it helps oh. with the build stability. So now we're going to move on to the actual build process and this is the touch screen and you can see those red areas are where it's going to start to build or build its supports. And what you can see here is the machine's uh, preheating. So that's semi-sintering the powder together. And it does this in two stages. Uh, this is the second, so it's just sintering that a little bit more. And it does that before it's now applying the full power of the mill. And you can see that beam is traversing uh, at 8,000 meters per second. And once it's completed that mill, it does a further uh, support melting stage and then it moves on to taking a photo and as you can see here it's now raking the powder and once it's happy with the raking it'll then lower and then repeat now back onto the preheat stage and it's, it's going to do that uh, thousands of times uh, in the build and this build's running 90 micron layers and it's a 270 uh, mill high build, so as you can see, it's, there's going to be thousands of layers where it, it repeats that process. And now, as we move on to a bit more of a complex section of the build, I believe this was about 70 mil up, 
uh, you can see the beam is moving across the building. It looks like there's multiple beams. That's just one beam that's moving so quickly. And it's doing that to maintain a good, uh, consistent uh, bed temperature across the whole or all of the part. And, and that just helps with not only your material quality, but your part quality, and ensures each layer throughout that build is as close uh, to the, all the other layers. So there is not wild variance in temperature. Again, it's just all about keeping that part quality consistent. Now, if you do want to find more information on EBM, a resident expert in EBM is Emmanuel Muzengaza, who's running this OBR project. Uh, you, we can get in touch with him if you put an inquiry through the NCAM or MTC website. So, hopefully that was a good insight into how you set up an electron beam machine. In the next video, we're going to be going over processes such as depowdering the part, taking the supports off, and we're going to also touch on how it was designed in the first place. So if you like that comment, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and once again, thank you for watching.